Um, actually, the word personal was not originally in the title with Fiverr, but if you're in business, you kind of need a personal brand. And if you have a small business, your personal brand is also your business brand. Anybody disagree with that? And sometimes, a lot of cases, just put it right here, it's really hard to distinguish the two, and you're trying to build a business brand, and you're looking at places like Nike and Disney, and you're trying to build a brand like them, but their brand has a completely different need than your brand. You're just starting out, you're just building initial awareness, I won't even start that conversation, but you need to build who you are and what makes you special and what's gonna actually turn your fans. So we have another partner that works a lot with us and he says you need 2,000. So I like metrics that you can like go to work up to. 2,000 super fans, raving fans, to really hit the tipping point of launching up a business. These fans, he says, this is Sean T. Murphy. So if y'all see another video come out, it says Sean. Sean is always a great one to listen to. But he says those 2,000 fans are such raving fans that if you tell them to put on a red shirt and wear it on Monday, they do. And they, they don't ask a lot of questions. They're like, all right, Sean said shirt today. Boom, red shirt. Those are the fans that we're looking for. But then we also want to turn them into customers that, right, that, hey. <laughs> so how many people here are business owners? All right, how many are freelancers? All right. How many are Fiverr buyers? Okay, and then how many are Fiverr sellers? Ooh, a lot less hands on that one. That was where I got started at, so that one is still my baby, and that's why they like me. I get to host these fun parties. All right, let's see how I even, I got my stuff all slow. There we go. All right, I got this like weird, weird picture. Anybody think it's a little crowded in the marketplace today? Facebook has like 2 billion users. There's only 7 billion people on the planet. They've got like a nice market share, right? They're definitely like the big gorilla in the room because everyone else is leading way far behind. LinkedIn, what, 500 million? Like they're not even creeping, right? There's got to be a way for you to pop out across the crowd, right? And that is going to be building your personal brand. Now, David Roberts, he is one of my co-founders with our training in the Business Growth Network. His big thing is visioning, right? And one of the first things that we need to do to build your vision is ask, why are you doing things? All right? And when I ask that, when David asks that, we always get the most bullshit answers. By the way, I curse. I've warned a few of you. Um, I have a quota of F-bombs I need to meet, and just letting you know. <laughs> but y'all give me bullshit answers. Karen. What I need you to do, though, is ask yourself why you do what you do. All right, that's bullshit answer number one. And then I need you to ask why that. And keep asking yourself why. Dean Grazios, who told me it was seven times. By seven whys, you should be in tears. Grown men should be in tears. Your base reasons are probably going to be in your childhood. There's going to be some traumatic relationship. So death in the family, none of it is happy, guys. It's not like I got married and that's my why. No, the why you do things is always like freedom, control, poverty, dad was never there. Like, they're terrible things, right? I need you to know your why. Very first and foremost, because if you want to be able to break through, look at this being all little. I'll make it big. To build your personal brand, the first thing you need to do is be vulnerable. And I know none of y'all are like, oh, the first thing, if they see that I'm vulnerable, right, they're not going to like me. They're going to see me as weak. I'm not saying that's not controlled vulnerability. I mean, you may not need to make peace with some of the things that you're working through. But when you're vulnerable, people can actually start to like you. How many people, I'm not saying comic book people because I'm totally not a comic book person, but like the comic book movies at least, right? Some Iron Man, Batman, some Wonder Woman, something like that. DC is bombing, bombing. Wonder Woman has been one of their best. And even they have, they're like begging her, can you do one more? Can we get one more contract out of you? Can you do this one? And Marvel's killing it. What are they on like number 35 or something insane from this one particular universe stream that they've done? And the difference is 
Think about Superman. He has no weakness. He has no vulnerability. But kryptonite, kryptonite's like an allergy, right? It's like I'm allergic to that pollen over there. It's not an actual character flaw. So as flawed human beings that we all messed up, y'all over 30, we broken. We've had some issues. We're a hot mess in some way, shape, or form. How do you relate to Superman who makes like the best decisions ever, never does anything wrong, he's got like the hottest body in the world? Too perfect. And then you look at Iron Man, <coughs> that man is flawed. He's like a degenerate, misogynist, <laughs> drug, drug user, <laughs> short, <laughs> brilliant. He can build amazing things, but a terribly flawed human individual, right? And he has a backstory. It's really sad, right? But we can relate to Iron Man. We can relate to the Marvel characters because they are flawed. So before we get into any of this, to be an influencer, to be a personal brand, you have to be okay with being vulnerable, deeply knowing your why, and deeply knowing the vision of where you want to go, even though you're not perfect. Does that make sense? All right, but ooh, they just changed sides on me all over the place. First one that I kind of learned, and this is from like high-end consultants, knowing your four core pillars, and I'm not asking for your business necessarily pillars, but you as an individual, what are your core pillars? So how many are my pet owners? I'm gonna tell y'all right now, whatever animal you have is probably one of your pillars. Like you own cats, you are a cat lady. You own dogs, you are all about your dog, right? I have one of my designers that was a client that we helped a lot with her strategy. She has a parrot. And the parrot comes to the fashion shows. And we got her to get her parrot their own Instagram. And the parrot has more followers than she does. <laughs> Nobody cares about her, they want to talk to the parrot. Obviously the parrot's still hers. So your animal, if you've got animals, totally one of your pillars, you got it knocked out right there. But what are your other pillars? Who are my families? They're like married, they got some kids running around. It's gonna be one of your pillars, right? In fact, everyone's got a mom and a dad, some friends, right? That should probably be one of your pillars because people would like to know that other people like hanging around with you and you're not a complete degenerate, psychotic mess. Ted Bundy? Uh, define pillar. Okay. Pillar is just, um, we get it, it's going to be the things that you talk about a lot. Okay. And one of the reasons that I want you to stick to your pillars is one of the things that a personal brand is, is people know what you're about. David is my vision guy. He's all about his zombies. So I could say vision is one of his pillars, but so are zombies, because he relates his story about vision using zombies. Zombies essentially come, like people, they're like, oh, I saw a zombie cup at Walmart. I almost bought it for you. They find a zombie image and they send it to him. Those are two of his pillars. If you're talking vision and you are talking zombies, Dave's your man. You want to have a creepy conversation, that's all him right there. Zombies. You can argue over which are better, like the Walking Dead zombies, the um, I, I zombie. World War Z zombie, now that's a good zombie right there. Everyone can know that about David. People know that when they talk to me that I drop F-bombs all the fucking time. <laughs> F-bombs are a pillar. No, military is a pillar of mine. <laughs> the F-bombs are just a nice compliment, right? That's just a bonus. So knowing your pillars gives you something to talk about. And then the next statement that kind of goes into it is it gives you a filter. How many know somebody on Facebook or Instagram or whatever your social profile of choice is that just vomits whatever idiocy that comes through their head? And you probably blocked them, muted them, unfriended them. <laughs> I got blocked yesterday because I said that I was really upset that our own border locked up a nine-year-old citizen for two days. I tried to stay out of politics. That was like my... Man, I had to cut my wrist almost. It felt like cutting my wrist to stay out of politics as I get into that. It's not good for business owners. 
Does anybody in here have a business that directly benefits from politics? Not a goddamn one of you. Which means you should probably leave the politics at home and it should not be one of your pillars. If politics does not directly affect or part of your avatar, you need to go. You run, like I have a lawyer who's a client and he regularly runs for one of the parties. All right, fine, let it be one of your pillars because then that's an issue. But it doesn't change the fact that you should still be careful and run everything you say on social media through a filter. Every single thing, no matter how private you think it is, no matter if it's in a private message, if you share it, I'm ex-Intel, you share it, it's public. The only secret is one that no one else knows. You kill somebody, bury that body on your own. Screw your best friend, that bitch will rat your ass out, all right? Keep a secret, take that to the grave. Ain't nothing you're saying on social media a secret. That same client, not on his own feed, on a friend's post, made a comment about gay people that was not so pleasant. He got 30 negative reviews in less than 30 minutes while I was still doing my mascara. My phone going, bzz, 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 bzz. John, what are you doing? He's like, I'm gonna shut up, don't shut it off, and they'll go to Yelp and I can't do anything there. <laughs> and they did, I got two on Yelp. Can't fix those for you, buddy. Um, so don't, if you create four pillars, four, see four? Do four pillars, that's what wine will do to you. And run everything you wanna say through those pillars. Because if you don't decide ahead of time who you are, what you're about, and what you wanna be known by, you're gonna word vomit in all the wrong ways. Pick positive things that work for you. Pick positive things. Nobody wants negativity in life. Life is negative enough. Do not need more negativity. Pick four positive things and run with it. Yeah. So you mentioned like pets are good, families are good. What are some other ones that you see? What is going to be your business, right? Your business is an obvious pillar, but what is it in your business that's going to be your pillar? So for mine, I'm digital marketing. Marketing, maybe it's just marketing too. Maybe a little business on its own. If I try to stay in my core wheelhouse, right? I suck at business operations. You want your bills paid? I am not your girl, right? <laughs> you want to know how to deal with people? I'm the person to go to if you are terrible with it and you're looking for tips for when you're terrible, right? Staying in that core focus, and then I would say you need to pick one that's pure, greater mission, right? That one that may never happen. You know, you got President Carter trying to alleviate polio across the entire like world. Like I think he eradicated it from Africa. Kind of a big vision, right? I have another partner who wants to make sure that everybody has clean water. You know, pick one thing. Like mine is like I help children. If any children's charities need, like that's my thing. You want to hurt a kid, like that's the only time I step into politics is like veterans and kids. You screw with one of those people or moms, I'm angry. That will be the only time I get into it. But just choose your four wisely. And don't just teeter. So I play tennis. Anyone play tennis? There's like way too many lines on a tennis court. I don't know if you've ever seen them. There's just, if you've never played, you have no idea what they mean. There's a net though. There's one in the center and there's one at the back. If you're playing doubles, somebody plays at the very back. Somebody can play at the very front. That back space is called no man's land. You be at the back or you be at the front, you never go in no man's land. You'll get your ass handed to you. These four pillars, I'm gonna spend a lot of time here because they matter. Go all the way in or stay back with the crowd. But as a business owner, if you really wanna be an influencer, you've gotta rush the net and shove the ball on somebody's nose. In a controlled manner for your four core pillars in a way that helps you that you choose on a good day, not a day you're angry, right? Because you know those bad days, we're like a little vengeful, a little hateful. Pick a good day, right? Any questions there? Uh, I have a question. Sure. So what if your brand is about being raw and honest, honest and opinionated, uh, embracing what you do know and what you don't know? Is it okay to build a brand around that? Absolutely. Okay. But pick your pillars that you're going to be that way. 
So in the military, when I did all the briefings, I could brief four-star generals and did. One of the things you have to be able to do is when somebody asks you a question, be strong enough to say, I don't know. Or, I don't care. Not my core not my core values. I don't care about dental care, health care, that's not mine. I'm never going to be in a decision-making space for those areas. I'm unfortunately just affected, right? I'm never going to affect them, right? I'm going to stick where I'm good. I'm going to stick in my spot. So be hyper-opinionated because that's a whole other talk, but that can help truly build your cult. So I'm about to step on, like, find your people. Being opinionated and taking hard lines can build a cult-like following. But you are going to find your people. Great intro, it's like I paid you to be in the audience, right? <laughs> you can take those hard lines. What I'm asking you to do is just do it in your core space. Like you pick a pet, take hard lines in that pet space. Like I, you know, if you're a cat person, you're like, no, I don't believe in declawing your cat. That's like cruel and unusual punishment. You, would I chop your fingers off because you scratch a little when you're angry? No, I wouldn't do that, so I wouldn't do that to my pet. Pick your pillars and know that the louder that you talk about your pillars, that you're going to actually attract your tribe. Because I don't care if you try to be Tony Robbins all of a sudden, that's hard, that's expensive, that's difficult, and that's how you will never break out. If you decide that, hey, the only people that I care about affecting are realtors, then now we can start to have a very personal conversation and you can speak some very raw language that realtors would be like, I got you. Yeah, all of those little places trying to take my money away off and point, what is it, 1% fees. That will like enrage realtors. Try talking smack about a teacher. Like this whole little tribe of teacher world will come down and like, like smack you, right? I'm asking you to pick the people that you're okay. So I don't care if anyone in here likes Donald Trump or doesn't like Donald Trump, all right? I can kind of look at you and I, I know I can see your eyes already. <laughs> I can see where the, is she gonna be mean to him? She better hate him. Like I can see the division already. The one thing is he's very good at is speaking raw, speaking in a very divisive language that makes his tribe die hard cult fans. That's how Brexit happened. That's how Donald Trump happened. Love it, hate it, don't care. Study it because it worked. I know it's hard for those people that are like, I hate that man. That might be hard, but there's something to be learned from people we hate. If you only learn from people you like, you'll have a very small bubble. All right? You've got to learn from the people you hate so that you understand why they got there, how they did it. Because those, those two issues, Brexit and Trump, that was digital marketing. That is my world. Those two groups killed it in digital marketing. So let's say you hated them. You've got to learn to play the game so you can win it. You don't know the rules. Can't win. Find your people. Speak their language. So out here I noticed some people were reading my thing about your avatar. I want to know who you talk to and who your tribe is. I don't want, no, I just want Susan, who lives in a wealthy house, in a wealthy suburb, who likes blah, blah, blah. No, I want, who is your ideal person? Who is your number one fan? If you've already got a great client, who is that person? I want to know that her name is Susan Sarandon. She's an alcoholic who's 42 with three kids, who lives on 666 Devil's Lane. Whatever it is, I want you to pick up the phone and call her. Bribe her. Hey girl, I know you love your Amazon. Here's a $25 gift coupon. I just want to talk to you for 20 minutes. Get her on the phone. I've never bribed someone and not stayed on the phone for like an hour. One time it was like an hour and a half because it was another mom and we just went to town talking about all the different things. Because they're going to say words that you need to be typing in. Your little fingers just need to be typing the whole time they're talking, asking questions. I am trained in interrogation. But the essential of that is just mirror them, whatever kind of they're feeling, kind of be that on the simplest level humanly possible, and just ask questions. Who in here doesn't like to talk about themselves? Everybody likes to talk about themselves, right? Just ask some questions. What are your dreams? What are your hopes? What are your goals? What's your family look like? Why do you do what you do? I did one of these for one of our clients was 
an e-liquid, that stuff you put in the, here's how illiterate I am, the little vapor sticky Vape. things, right? Vape stickers. And I was talking to someone who used it, and one of the things that I figured out by talking to about five of these people is they actually feel bad that they vape. Vape juice costs a lot of money. And they actually self-loathe because they vape. So one of the things that I know that I now need to address in my conversations and my marketing and everything is letting them off the hook. It's okay to vape. Did you know that we took out all the industry self-regulated, we took all that popcorn lung garbage out? We don't have any of the bad stuff that's normally associated with cigarettes. And it's okay. Just letting them off the hook. When you know your people, we had one client we were researching they actually put a negative review in a two-page color ad spread in a magazine because they were a magazine, or magazine, they were a ski run, like one of those mountains you go up and you pay to go ski, that is specifically made for a, like people who ski all the time, like the adventurers that want the double black diamond. You know, like the rest of you are like, no, nah, I'm up here on the bunny hill over and over again all day. No, these are for the people who are adventurous. So when someone wrote a negative review on their Facebook, it was like, oh, it's so many trees, and it's so bumpy, and it's so dangerous, and the visibility is hard, and the powder's so fresh and thick that you bury. Like all the words that someone who loves to ski and loves like the fresh trails is just like, oh my God, yes, I need that. It became humorous, right? Because if you know your client, you know that negative review actually attracts your ideal customer, right? I need you to find your own people. It will even help you in your personal life. Ain't nobody need all that negativity around. Nobody. You attract your tribe, you will be happier business owner, wealthier business owner, and a happier person. Any questions there? Here's the one where y'all are gonna hate me. Oh, you got a question? Okay. Publish every day. I don't care about your number of your followers. I don't care on your platform. I wanna know what platform your people are on, do they prefer to watch a video? Are they a podcast person? Are they a reader? Pick your poison, audio only, visual and audio, written, and publish every day. How many people know who Gary Vee is? I get to share a stage with him in September. That should be interesting to see who drops more F-bombs. <laughs> he has a very definitive personality, and he doesn't have time anymore to publish every day like he used to, he liked to. So he hires someone. There is some kid intern's job whose only job is to follow him around with a camera. He does an exit interview, guy with the camera's all set up, just watch him. And if you're ever on LinkedIn, you'll see some of the more private conversations, you'll see someone's doing an exit interview. That was an actual one I saw on LinkedIn. I chose Medium, I actually moved three blogs there recently, I haven't even moved them all over there because I was able in one month to double my traffic to my personal websites in one month. They send me traffic. And you can write about anything. Doesn't have to just be business. I have another friend who just publishes every day in really long Facebook posts. Like those kind where you click on it to read more and it's so long, it opens a brand new window <laughs> with this long, the new blog. I have some who do that in groups. My, one of my partners, Scott, um, I forgot, just what is it? They stopped everything. Scott Schilling, sold over 25 million from the stage, has pictures with like him and Zig Ziglar and Sir Richard Branson and a bunch of famous people that I've never asked for a picture because I hate pictures. <laughs> but he, we do a, a podcast every morning by video on Facebook Live, building funnels for free in the morning. One hour on Facebook Live, and then I have something that automatically uploads it to YouTube. I don't pay attention to it a lot, I'm not gonna actually be working from nine to 10 in the morning because I'm that person that needs some caffeine in my system. Like it needs to be like pulsating through my veins before I can get going. So normally I'd just be on Facebook on that time, <laughs> playing air hockey or just dwaddling around here doing something. So I decided to do Facebook Live for an hour. I get to help a lot of people. I get to create affiliate commissions, which I like every month. Scott and I have a blast and come up with all sorts of business ideas. And I have a fuck ton load of content. It's gonna take me another year just to process all the content that we've created. 
I have a regular, like, three or four people that just, I miss, y'all stopped in the summer. When's your morning podcast going to start again? I'm tired, guys. Maybe I don't want to do it every morning. I, I have a couple, I have one of my members in here. I told them that if nothing else, everyone's like, I don't have time to publish every day. Who do, what, who do you think I am? Jump on five Facebook Live for five minutes every day. Five minutes. Sean G. Murphy does that. He just picks a random topic. You can be lifting weights. You can be playing with your cat. You can play with your dog. I don't care. One person, two people. There's one person I know she does it while she does her makeup in the morning. And it's like makeup and tea with so-and-so. Just pick a topic that's your four pillars and publish every day. If there's news in your industry, talk about it. If you had a story with a client, talk about it. If something made you mad that day, talk about it. I need you to get used to publishing, and I need you to get out there and find some haters. You need some haters in your life. You need to build a thick skin, get used to it. You need to know what it feels like to not have anybody read something, and you need to know what it feels like to have something go crazy viral. Sound good? Ain't none of y'all going to do that, but one of y'all is going to do it, publish every day for the next year. That is straight out of Gary Vee's mouth, too. He said, you won't get any traction for about six months, nine months, or a year, and then all of a sudden, you're going to have more content than every single one of your competitors. Think about that. Same platform every day. Now, you can share it to other places, but and be native. So, like I said, I'll do Facebook Live, and the program I have completely uploads it to YouTube. I never share YouTube to LinkedIn or YouTube to Facebook because they all hate each other. They're like some rival gang members. They don't want anything to do with the other one. They want you on their platform. They don't want you leaving. They are vicious. And there's a reason that's beer bottles up there, right? I want you to find some partners. So I mentioned that I do my stuff with Scott Schilling. I've got David here who happens to be in the audience that helps with our members. Find some partners. Find some mentors. Find some people you'd like to mentee. Is that the right word? You're the mentor for them? Find some people you'd like to mentor. You need some mentees. Find some friends. One of my mentors is Sean. Oh, not Sean. Billie Jean Shaw. It's going to get there somewhere. Love Billie Jean. All his employees are his friends. Some people don't want to work with their friends. That works for Billy. And the people he does launches with are friends. At the end of the day, when you're having to do a launch for two, three weeks, six weeks, it is intense. You better love each other. So find some partners because it's going to open up a lot of doors for you. A ton of doors. Find some partners that aren't like you. They have the audience that you want, but y'all are non-competitive. Or maybe y'all are all competitive, but y'all are friendly competitive, and it's like y'all two against the world, right? And y'all are okay, y'all got a nice big market, y'all aren't stomping on each other's feet. Find some partners. One, business is just more fun with friends. They've actually determined in Facebook that people would rather talk to people they've never met before in groups that share the same interest than their own friends and family. Because our own friends and family don't love the things that we do, right? And sometimes the people that are our tribe are out there all over the globe. I have friends all over the globe now, and those are my tribe. I'd much rather be hanging out with them online, even though I've never met some of them in person. But that happens in business, too. Who do you think I'm going to invite on Facebook Live when Scott's gone one morning? I'm like hopping, I'm like, I know it's like Pacific time zone, it's going to be like four in the morning your time, but you want to come live with me? You want to come talk funnels with me? Hell yeah! Guess what happens? They're on live! So they do this crazy thing and they share it with their friends and their 2,000, 200,000 person list. And now that person knows you and you know them and y'all are referral partners and it's a big old happy family, right? Find some partners. Find your tribe. Find your partners. And this is where I get super fun. Build a fucking list. Facebook, you do not own it. I have hardly ever gone on Facebook. I only went on Facebook once every three months. It has changed every single time. Every time I hit the, every single time I talk too fast. I hit the ad platform. There was something different. 
Instagram just decided it's not going to tell you how many times your post has been liked. Medium has gone through like five different changes. You need to roll with the punches, military. That's what we do. Survive, adapt, thrive. Repeat over and over and over again. All those people bitching Facebook changed. I'm like, how to change? Let's roll with it. Because they need to make their users happy so that they can sell more ads. If the users are not happy, so about four years ago, the users of Google were not happy. Bing was coming in. Yahoo was coming in. Because you would go search for something, and you would end up on some random, ugly-ass blog that's just a bunch of words everywhere. And their spiders are having to crawl like 50,000 different fake blogs per marketer because that's how SEO is run. And at some point, they decide, you know what, that's a trash heap. And if people keep on getting garbage answers, they're going to go over to Bean. So they had to make a massive, massive shift. People were angry. People got blacklisted. One of my clients got blacklisted. You have to change with the times. They are making their platforms the best for their users so that you have users to market to. Ain't nobody ain't fa on Facebook. You could write 100 posts, ain't nobody gonna see them. So the changes are gonna happen. But if you have a list, I don't even care if you go from MailChimp to Constant Contact and different platforms, Kartra, it's my baby. The list is yours. We were playing on LinkedIn earlier, right? Did you know you could go into the back end of LinkedIn and download your entire list of friends, their first name, last name, email address, phone number, what they do, where they live? I am a happy intel person. Girl, I used to have to work to get information on people. I used to have to have military databases as a civilian today. I have more, I can get more information on every single one of you in less than like an hour than I could have ever done in the military. There is so much power. You just go and you click a button, and it tells you, I'm going to email your list because it takes so long to get all your stuff. We're just going to email it to you. I can go download a list of almost 10,000 people. Would y'all not say that's something powerful to own? You're building a personal brand. Magic, magic. You're in Facebook land. Don't listen. You can turn around and upload that list to Facebook and to custom audiences and advertise to only your tribe cutting your ad cost way down and increasing your engagement and relevancy because they already know you, right? Leverage LinkedIn and build a list. I hate MailChimp, but I'd rather use MailChimp than nothing. I super hate Constant Contact. I'd rather use MailChimp than that. I love Kartra, but I know that costs a little bit more and does a lot more than a lot of you need. Pick something. Offer an ethical bribe. Have people come to your office, do speeches, connect with people on LinkedIn. I don't care how you build your list, just don't say, subscribe for my newsletter, because nobody cares. Ain't nobody want that spam. And then when you publish, remember, because you're publishing every day, right? Take what you published, make it short, email it to them, either daily, once a week, once every two weeks. To not ignore them, don't do once a month. Please keep contact every two weeks. Send them the best stuff that you published those two weeks that week. Have a conversation with them. And sometimes just get to know them. Don't ask for, don't sell anything. Send your best recipes. Tell them about how your cat puked and how that relates to business. Right? Stick into your four pillars, right? What does your audience want to know? Email them. Have a conversation, not B2B, not B2C, human to human. If this row right here is my perfect audience, all I'm doing in the email, you're like, oh my God, what do I write in the email? You think about your person, like I literally will take a picture of the person I'm talking to up there, and I will act like I'm talking to her. I will speak in short sentences, because have you ever met someone brand new, and you're like, hi, my name is Jenna, Brianna? Oh, I actually got it. I'm terrible with names. I'm so proud of myself. Um, oh my God, I'm in a monologue to you. Blah, 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 blah. You would never do that. You would speak in zzz, 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 and back and forth, right? And you would build to that mountain monologue. That's all you do in an email. Super simple. Have a human conversation in the email. I'm not even asking you to sell yet. 
You haven't earned the right to sell to that group yet. Add value. Give them resources outside of you that they would care about. Send them a funny cat picture because you know they'd laugh about it. Right? Build a list though. If you've ever talked to a marketer long enough or a business owner who's success successful, they'll tell you the money's in the list. You build an army of your tribe in a list. And this is one of the things I love about Kartra. I can send an email out, tell me exactly how many people got it, exactly how many people opened it, and exactly how much that single individual email made me. Isn't that cool? Launch products, which brings us, once you have a tribe, you can sell them stuff they want. Notice I didn't ask you in the beginning, what do you want to sell? I said build your tribe, find your tribe. There are people who all they do is they build a tribe of like-minded individuals, and then when something happens that affects that tribe, they make a fucking t-shirt and sell it. Amazon does all the work. They make a picture and they slap it, they upload it to Amazon and boom, they just send their link over there in an email. How many, like during the election cycles, if you want to go that direction, tell that famous picture of Obama with like the red, white, and blue kind of stylized. That was just some guy who was like, boom, and it just flashed across the world. Boy made a lot of money. Mark Zuckerberg, I, I still love politics, he's speaking in front of the Senate, and the Senator's like, how does Facebook make money? And, you pay? Sir, we sell ads. One of my own friends made that shirt and had it done in less than 20 minutes, selling it to all of us. <laughs> we sell ads. <laughs> With Mark Zuckerberg, and you know all they did in Photoshop was like change the contrast to super hyper black and white and get the terrible. If you know what they want and you start polling them and doing things like, I don't know, asking them what they want, they'll tell you what they want. That's as simple as that. Once you build your audience, they will tell you what they want. You can throw things out there like, hey, y'all guys want to do a mastermind in the Bahamas? Nah, dude, but how about Belize? Mastermind in Belize it is. How about a cruise ship? There you go. Free booze. No, no, you gotta pay for the booze. Damn it. Close enough, right? <laughs> Launch products. How many people put a business card in that little container that went around? How many people, if I handed you a business card, it would end up in the trash before the end of the week? Oh, I'm glad some of y'all are honest. <laughs> Your new business card will be the products you sell. It will be the t-shirts you offer that are not about you, that's not your name, it's not your brand on there, that it is like igniter. It is, what are some of the other ones? As, how many people have Nike? Like just do it t-shirts. I had so many of those when I was an athlete. And they're not even asking, did they say just think about it and do it? No, they said just fucking do it. They, the F was silent, right? <laughs> <laughs> You know Nike, that, that F-bomb is totally in there. It is silent. Who in here has written a book? That's your new business card. Anybody want to know how to write one in a day? Got a video for you. Pick a product your people want on your own platform. Sell it. People are not going to buy from an individual business owner hustling. They're going to buy you and your story. Craft your story, craft who you are, decide who you want to be, and as Tony Robbins said, I built this beast, build that bitch, build your tribe, and sell them what they want and need. I think that was all I had. Any questions on that? I got one more thing. On the back, Fiverr sent some cool shit. I told them that if they sent me some more boring t-shirts and bags, I'd be pissed. So they sent me these cool little light-up boards, kind of like this one I have right here. I don't know if they saw my videos and were like, we're just going to match it. Um, 
But it's like this, except little. So one of the things, I mentioned Nike, they're just do it. One of my mentors, I hate his platform click funnels, but Richard Brunson is a sales marketing genius. He's got, anybody know his saying? You're just one funnel away. So many companies have a tiny phrase. It's not about their product. I want you to craft a phrase that's small enough to fit on that box that is a personal belief that can go across anything you build, sell, ever. If you, I know one of my clients, back in the day before women owned businesses, she built and sold 11 of them, multi-millions each one of them. If you built a slogan just for one business, it's gone. It doesn't stay with you. What is the slogan you could go that is your vision, your mission, your why for every business you would ever build from here to the day you die? Because if you're an entrepreneur, you know your ass is working till the day you die. It's just too much fun. <laughs> and you broke. You didn't save shit. Y'all invested every dime back. Because it's your baby. It's your fun thing, right? So we have over here, we're going to start over here. I got some pens. I got some paper. The things that say like... Um, no risk, no reward. The back is some stuff you can write on too. A nice reminder that everything worthwhile comes with risk. Just brainstorm some different ideas. Google some cool slogans. Think about the ones that are in your head already. Pick out your letters that you need at station number two. And then get your board and build it. Any questions? Sounds like fun, right? Yeah. You can do it. You can do it. Just do it tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> nah. Nah. And get some more wine. Get those creative juices flowing. But not too much you can't drive. The girl, Jenna, she's doing it big. Wait, wait, wait. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Watch the kids. Yo, what's up? It's your boy, Mr. Fetty Shop, the brand ambassador, and I'm chilling with another ambassador. My girl, Jenna, this is an Air Force veteran doing her thing. Whoop, whoop. Tell them where you went, Jenna, and tell them how to get We are at my office at Warfare Marketing talking about how to build your personal brand all day, every day. Come on, man. You knew I had to be here. You knew I had to be here. Like I said, Air Force, I'm good. Air Air Force, right? Oh, ah! Are you ready? Oh, you got hoorah, hoorah. Uh, hoorah, hoorah. Hey, hey, I'm getting this ammunition for my weapon. My weapon is my brain. It's your boy, Mr. Shop. Peace. Salute. You know what it is. Film the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, wait. I'm still alive. Say hi. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy, Mr. Fade Shop, the brand ambassador. And yes, I am I am in the war marketing room with Jenna. Jenna slammed the stage. She did her thing. Listen, if you are trying to build your personal brand and get paid, holla at my girl Jenna. She's doing it big. Salute, peace, at ease. Is that helpful? Oh, yeah, super was. Awesome. You taking all the notes? Yeah, I'm writing down the... The message I had uh, before, I just had it on my phone before that. I need to purchase one of these things. So what is this here? Thank you. Now you can take some good notes, right? <laughs> you want to turn the board on? No, no. So I, I guess my, my question is, obviously, obviously some good content mixed in. There. Is there a reason for the, the profanity? I mean, is that just... It's going to come out either way. Yeah. Interesting. You grow, work, you, but you spend work. all your time with pilots. Yeah, 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 yeah. I tell when I'm um, speaking at veteran events, yeah. I tell them I can totally turn it off, but I'm not going to be as passionate. Yeah. You're not a profanity guy? No, no, no. I mean, you, you don't worry about the idea of sensibilities of the, obviously you have a different, diverse audience. You don't worry about that at all? I'm attracting my own audience. Okay. There's some people you're just not going to click with. Sure, sure. I'd rather be in a space with my tribe sure. that I can be my authentic self, okay. and they're going to love the profanity. Yeah. There's a whole crowd. If I give them a study that says people who say profanity, 
speak profanity, are smarter, they're going to share it all over the place. And there's going to be another type of person where if you show them a study that people who speak profanity are less intelligent, they're going to share it all over the place. Find your own tribe. Sure. Studies sure. show whatever you want it to show. Sure, sure. Okay, interesting. Have fun. Go build one. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm going to let them. Build it looks one. like all, all the creative, y'all let them do that. No, thing. go find yeah. one. If you did, yeah. if you did a Facebook Live, yeah. what would you want a sign to say behind you? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, let them, I'll let them do that. Thing. No, no. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Even something simple like... How is your financial health? Yeah, obviously, regulated space, kind of constrained in terms of. No, you can say, How's your financial house? I've worked with y'all boys before. I know you're compliant. I took the CFA exam. Y'all got wiggle room. So I have one of those boards there. Mm hmm. Different things on, on the board. I actually have. Uh, you change it up? Yeah. Yeah. So what, what I have on it now is what does it take to be number one? I don't. Ain't nobody with the real answer. Yeah. I could come up with the idea, but I can't like execute it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's it's really good for that. There's a lot of really good things. I like like a little Right. Unless it's slide in or anything. Right. You know, so you want in there too? Always. What you putting on yours? Let go and tap in. Oh, I like that. Yes. I like that 